I hate being sick. I don't know about you, but being sick is terrible. There's never a good time to be sick. Um, you know, if you are working and you're working on stuff and you're sick, you wish you were at work so you could get that done. If you had a day off and you were sick, you feel cheated because you didn't get your day off. Or if you're on vacation, it feels even worse because you can't do the things that you want to do. There's never a good time to be sick. And yet at the same time, I find myself that when I've been sick, not, you know, with a, with something like a flu or something that makes me feel bad, right, for, for a period of time. Maybe I needed medicine and medication to get over it. When I'm finally better, I am more joyful about my health and worshiping God and being able to do all the things that I couldn't do while I was sick uh, than I normally am otherwise when I have that health on a daily basis, and so when we're looking for, uh, when we're looking at these laws today that talk about the cleansing of lepers, that they're offering these sacrifices, one of the things I want you to keep in the back of your mind is this, that these sacrifices, this, this declaration that these people are clean is the, the, uh, the thing that they're waiting for to jump back into community and to jump back into worship with people. And if they're like myself, which I'm sure that they are, they're excited to do it in a way that that maybe they took for granted all the times that they were healthy and just did it anyway. And I pray that that affects you and me as we consider these words as we continue our study in the book of Leviticus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. By clicking subscribe to our channel and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, today we're going to jump into this, this idea. We talked about leprosy and, and uh, being able to discern who's leprous in chapter 13. Now we're talking about the cleansing of this leprosy and what was needed for the community to come back into worship, for these individuals to come back into community and worship together. Let's check it out. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, This shall be the law of the leprous person for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp, and the priest shall look. Then, if the case of the leprous disease is healed in the leprous person, the priest shall command them to take for him, who is to be cleansed, two live clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet yarn, and hyssop. And the priest shall command them to kill one of the birds in an earthenware vessel over fresh water. And he shall take the live bird with the cedar wood and the scarlet yarn, and hyssop, and dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed of the leprous disease. Then he shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird go into the open field. And he who is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all of his hair, and bathe them in water, and he shall be clean. And after that he may come into the camp, but live outside his tent for seven days. And on the seventh day, he shall shave off all of his hair from his head, his beard and his eyebrows, and he shall shave off all of his hair. And then he shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day, he shall take two male lambs without blemish and one ewe lamb, a year old without blemish, and a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, and one log of oil. And the priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed, and these things before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall take one of the male lambs and offer it for a guilt offering, along with the log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb in the place where they kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the place of the sanctuary. For the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest it is most holy. The priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the lobe of the right ear of him as to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Then the priest shall take some of the log of the oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand, and dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and sprinkle some oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And some of the oil that remains in his hand, the priest shall put on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, and on top of the blood of the guilt offering. 
and the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hands he shall put on the head of him as to be, who, who is to be cleansed. Then the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord. The priest shall offer the sin offering to make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. And afterwards he shall kill the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar. Thus the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and cannot afford so much, then he shall take one male lamb for a guilt offering to be waived, to make atonement for him, and a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, and a log of oil. Also two turtle doves, or two, or two pigeons, whichever he can afford. The one shall be a sin offering, the other a burnt offering. And on the eighth day he shall bring for them, uh, he shall bring them for his cleansing to, a pre to the priest, to the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb of the guilt offering. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand and shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the lobe of the right ear of him as to who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, in the place where the blood of the guilt offering was put. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hands he shall put on the head of him as who is to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer of the turtle doves or pigeons, whatever, whichever he can afford, one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, along with a grain offering, and the priest shall make atonement before the Lord for him who is to be cleansed. This is the law for him who in for him in whom is a case of leprous disease who cannot afford the offerings for his cleansing. And so what we see in this passage of scripture is what it takes for a person after he's been cleansed of this leprous disease, after he's been healed, to come back into community. And this is something he's going to want to do. Is It's a celebration. And not everybody got this celebration because not, not everybody was cleansed of their leprous disease. And, and this reminds me of those in our fellowship, in our congregation you know, there comes a point where we, we grow older and we are no longer healthy enough or able enough to make our way into the assembly anymore. And I have a great heart for something like that. And, and a great heart for those who are sick and get sick to a point that they cannot come back into the gathering together of believers. Because these people, if they could, they absolutely would. I, I have such respect from people who have grown older and spend literally, their, their highlight of the week is to make it to church because it takes everything that they can to get into the assembly of God's people. Much like the sick person who gets well and wants so desperately to get back into fellowship, the elderly people in the same way are wanting to make sure that this is a priority of their week of, of worship, of community. You know, and, and for some of those people, that community won't come again unless it comes to them in their household. And I think we as the body of Christ ought to make a larger effort toward those who are shut-ins within our community. But we need to remember that there comes a time that they're going to be looking forward to, just like me. Like I said at the beginning of this time, when I get well from being sick, I can't wait to worship God. Well, there's a time for all of us that we may be left out from the community because we, we're growing sick. We're growing to the end of our, our days here. And we have a time of worship left for us that we get to look forward to that is going to be forever. And, and it's that ultimate cleansing, that ultimate brought into community, never to be taken away from us again. It's found in uh, Revelation chapter 21, the first five verses. Let's take a look at that together. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. 
Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. You know, this is the worship that we're looking forward to that we will never be taken away from. That, you know, right now, we could be taken away because of sickness, because of health. That takes us away from community. And if we're healthy again, we should be rejoicing and coming back into community as we have that health and opportunity. But you know what? If we find ourselves that we're not in that place, that we're finding ourselves in separation from community, we have something to look forward to still. This eventual final restoration of all things where we will worship God forever. And that's something we should be looking for forward to uh, and looking uh, forward to that it will never be taken away from us. And while we have this opportunity, when, when we're well again, we should worship as if it's just that shadow land of the eventual reality where it will never be taken away. I pray that changes your, your mindset on worship. I pray that it changes your mindset on the enthusiasm we should have when we come together in worship in community and place a stronger value on that because we don't want to be taken away from that because we're going to be doing that forever in his presence. I pray that helps you today and helps me too. And we will talk with you again tomorrow.